Hey, what's up Blender artists? I am Jonathan from Germany, that's why I have this weird accent. And in today's video, we are going to create this rocket launch scene with the new fluid engine Manta Flow in Blender 2.82. But before we start, I just want to quickly show you the new update in the Manta Flow branch, because now we have the option to change the cache type from modular to replay, which allows us to now play the simulation along, also if we haven't baked anything. But because I had some issues with this version of Manta Flow, I will stick with the old version for this tutorial. And if you are not subscribed yet, then you should really consider doing so because I upload a new video every Saturday with new and exciting content. And with that out of the way, let's get started. So okay, for this tutorial, I created this little scene with this engine right here, which later should emit the fire and smoke. And it's just a little model from Sketchfab and a ground plane with an asphalt texture. Okay, we will first start with setting up the emitter and domain and later go over force fields and how to make the simulation a bit more interesting. So for the emitter, just add mesh and add a circle. And to zoom in on the circle, we can press control and point on our number pad and go into edit mode and fill it with F. Now go into orthographic view and move it upwards till it's inside our engine. For the domain, we will just add a cube and move it one meter up so it sits on its anchor point and now go into orthographic view, scale it up and then scale it also on the X and Y axis till it fits. So right now we can just start setting up Manta flow. So for the domain, press fluid, domain and it's already set to gas, which is exactly what we want. And because I just like the look, I will check border collisions for every direction. And also adaptive domain to just make the bake a little bit faster and set the end frame to 250, which will probably vary for the type of simulation you want to do. Okay, now select the emitter and also check fluid and select flow. It's already set to smoke, but this is not what we want. We want fire plus smoke. So select that and also select inflow so it emits smoke over time. I just want a little bit more fire in my simulation. So I change the fuel value to two. To make the smoke and fire go down, we will add a wind force field. So just add a wind force field and rotate it 180 degrees on the X axis. And again, go into orthographic view and move it right above our emitter. For me personally, I found that a strength of 100 works, but you will have to figure it out for yourself what works for your simulation. And because I don't want smoke passing through this engine model, we will also check fluid and make this an effector collision. So right now we can just give it a quick bake. So hit bake data and we will see us once it's ready. So I will stop it right there and we can see that there's way too much fire. So I will just reduce that, select the emitter and change the fuel value back to one. And because this is a very large simulation, we will also have to change our resolution divisions to something around 640. But before I bake that, I want to quickly add another force field, which is gonna be a turbulence force field on the ground, just to make this whole scene a bit more interesting. And I will set the strength to around 30, because this also again works for my type of simulation. So now I will bake the simulation and wait till it's finished, which can take a while and we will see us again once it's done. So I stopped it again on frame 24 because this simulation would just take too long for me personally to simulate. But again, this only took like, I don't know, 15 minutes to simulate, which is perfectly fine with a resolution of 640. So now we will check all the different materials and talk about the different render settings to get the least amount of render time. If you would go into rendered view, we can see that there is just a white box. And this is because we haven't actually assigned any material to our domain. So open another window and go into the shader editor and hit new. Because this is a volumetric effect, we don't need the principled BSDF. We actually don't need any shader which goes into the surface input. So just search for volume and we can already see the principal volume shader. So get this and plug the volume output into the volume input. And if you know, and if we now go into the rendered view, we can just see the smoke. But there is a lot of fire, so we also want to be able to see this. So change the black body intensity to one 
because cycles take such a long time to render. I will just do all my materials right now in the material preview tab and we can see that this starts looking like fire but I want the fire to be much brighter so I change the blackboard intensity to something around 30. And also right now I want the smoke to be a bit more dense so for example 5 and if I now go into cycles we get this really nice smoke simulation but you can already see that this would take a really really long time to render so so now the blender 2.81 intel denoiser comes in handy because Mantaflow is built on the blender 2.81 experimental branch we can just go into the compositing tab and add of course first a viewer node so we can see what is going on i have right now no image rendered but in your case this might be helpful and now add a denoise node we can see that we have three inputs image normal and albedo but we only have one image output on our render layers node so go into your passes properties panel and check denoising data we can see right now that we get all the different outputs we need so plug the noisy image into the image input, the denoising normal into the normal input and the albedo into the albedo input. And now we can just plug the image output into both image inputs. And if we would now go ahead and render this image, it would automatically get denoised. So I will just set up my camera around here and also adjust the focal length to something like that. So now we can start to render this image and in my case it works on my GPU, I don't run out of memory. If you would run out of memory you would probably want to render it on your CPU but then you would also have to adjust the tile size. For me a tile size of 256 works for my GPU and CPU I would choose a tile size of around 16 or 8. So this is about it. If you want to have a bit faster render times you could also change the samples in your render to down to 64 but be aware that your render won't look as good as it would do with more samples. If you like this tutorial then please consider liking and subscribing and checking out my other videos and with everything said and done we will see us in the next video.